Hi, I'm Matteo, editor of this episode of Synthesis Workshop. In today's Research Spotlight episode, we have the pleasure to have Joe Anderson here with us. Joe is currently finishing his industrial PhD at GSK in Glasgow, where he's pursuing the synthesis of novel BCP compounds for application in medicinal chemistry. Today Joe is going to give us an overview on the BCP synthesis state of the art, followed by his own contribution in the field. Welcome Joe, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you for the kind introduction and for the opportunity to share some of my research with the Synthesis Workshop audience. It's a pleasure to talk about one of the projects I've worked on during my industrial PhD at GSK, which is our recently published work showing the first organometallic functionalisation of the bridge positions of bicyclo 111 pentanes, or BCPs. This approach contrasts with previous methods that we've seen in the past few years, which have all been based on one electron or radical chemistry, and in doing so allows a significant expansion of accessible BCP chemical space. We saw the importance of BCPs as bioisosteres for aromatic rings in a recent research spotlight episode by Isaac Q from the Hartwig Group. In fact, bicyclopentanes are only one of a whole series of proposed bioisosteres for arenes, but arguably they've received the most attention in the past 5 or 10 years. That being said, all of these fragments are saturated, they have a high content of approximately sp3 hybridised carbon atoms, and they are all more three-dimensional than the parent arene. Moving towards three-dimensional architectures like this in drug discovery, and away from more planar or sp2-rich scaffolds, is the movement that is now widely known within the industry as escape from flatland. Increasing the three-dimensionality of drug-like molecules is now widely understood to positively impact key medicinal properties. For example, molecular three-dimensionality generally translates to increased structural complexity, which in turn results in more efficient and selective binding of the ligand to its target. Removing aromatic rings from a compound also interrupts pi stacking in the crystal lattice of the solid material, which often raises the compound solubility. Removing aromatic rings also removes a site of potential SIP oxidation, which can translate to higher metabolic stability. Overall, compounds which are more three-dimensional tend to be more developable, and the sp3 content of a molecule correlates positively with clinical success. Interest in BCPs in particular was accelerated after an important 2012 study by Pfizer, in which they prepared this BCP-containing analogue of a gamma secretase inhibitor for the treatment of Alzheimer's disease. As you can see, incorporation of the BCP functionality provided a significant increase in solubility and also a small increase in metabolic stability, while retaining sub-nanomolar potency against the target. To give another example, later in 2017, my colleagues at GSK reported the BCP analogue of this LP-PLA2 inhibitor for the treatment of atherosclerosis. Incorporation of the BCP core similarly gave a significant increase in solubility and in this case also improved membrane permeability, again while maintaining sub-nanomolar potency against the target. In terms of their synthesis, BCPs with only bridgehead substituents, as replacements for monosubstituted or paradisubstituted arenes, are relatively straightforward to access. The majority of these methods start from 111 propellane, which in turn is accessed from this commercial tetrahalide on the left by treatment with two equivalents of an organolithium reagent. From there, there's a whole range of radical and polar processes in the literature, some of which are discussed by Isaac Q in his video, to open up the central bond of this propellane to give the corresponding bicyclopentane. But now let's consider possible bioisosteres for ortho- or meta-substituted arenes. Well, this is more challenging, since we now need to consider functionalisation of the bridge positions of the BCP, and it turns out that the synthetic toolkit of reactions that we have to access these motifs is very much more limited. This is a problem for two reasons. First of all, it means we don't have access to this chemical space, and we're unable to explore these interesting vectors. But also, you'll notice that if we have two different bridgehead substituents on the BCP, then we also get a new stereogenic centre on the bridge position, and the stereochemical complexity of a molecule, as well as its three-dimensionality, is also something that correlates positively with clinical success. So coming back to what I said earlier, hopefully you will agree that there is a real need to develop new synthetic methods to access diverse three-dimensional scaffolds for drug discovery, and as part of this, a need for new approaches to bridge functionalised bicyclopentanes. Of particular interest are methods that enable late-stage diversification, which is to say that from a single common intermediate, we can directly introduce a whole variety of substituents onto the BCP core. If we look through the literature surrounding these compounds, then we see that this species was prepared in 1993 by the Schluter group. 
This again is a propellane, as we saw on a previous slide, except this one has a protected hydroxymethyl functionality on the bridge that you might expect could be further derivatized. But surprisingly, nobody appreciated the synthetic potential of intermediates like these until 2020, when chemists from Merck were able to use turboamide reagents to open this propellane and a range of analogues under strain release amination conditions that were originally developed for the parent propellane hydrocarbon by the Barron Group. The Barron Group themselves made a further contribution to the field in 2021, in which they took Schluter's propellane, opened it with alkyl iodides under trichloroborane borane initiation, and then showed a range of manipulations at both the bridge and bridgehead sites to access diverse 1-2 difunctionalized BCP products. One of the most interesting transformations they reported was conversion of the hydroxymethyl functionality into a redox active ester, followed by decarboxylative radical Nagishi coupling. This chemistry, which enables the installation of various benzenoid aromatic rings, was an important advance since it represented the first example of divergent synthesis directly off the BCP bridge positions. Also in 2021, the Chin Group at UT Southwestern made further progress in this field by showing a novel construction of the BCP core through an intramolecular balloon valve type coupling. However, the bridge substituent in this case originates from the pre-functionalized cyclobutanone starting material rather than from a direct BCP functionalization. Earlier this year, our group at GSK and the University of Strathclyde showed the divergent introduction of nitrogen heterocycles onto the BCP bridge positions. Again, starting from Schluter's propellane, we were able to access several 1, 2, 3 trifunctionalized BCPs, each bearing a carboxylic acid handle at the bridge position. We were then able to use this handle as a radical precursor group by treatment with hypervalent iodine oxidants under blue light irradiation. The resulting BCP radicals were then trapped by free nitrogen heterocycles in a Manishi type process to give the hetero related BCP products. Finally, the Macmillan Group at Princeton have also made a significant contribution to this area. Starting with this commercially available 1,3 diacid, which in turn comes from the addition of biacetal across the parent propellane, followed by haloform oxidation of the resulting BCP diketone, they access BCP molybromides by optimization of a controlled CH bromination on the bridge. From there, they were able to apply their group's photoredox halogen atom transfer methodologies to allow amination using acidic nitrogen nucleophiles and also aerolation through a formal cross electrile coupling with aryl bromides. So hopefully you can appreciate from this brief literature summary that there are now a handful of methods for functionalization of the BCP bridge positions, starting from either the carboxylic acid or the bromide. However, all of these reactions are radical or one electron processes, and so at the outset of this project, there remained untapped opportunity to explore two electron or polar chemistry to derivatize the BCP bridges. It's been known since the 1970s that BCP bridge cations are not viable synthetic intermediates, since they undergo rapid ring opening even at cryogenic temperatures. Given this, only bridge anions could reasonably be considered. However, examples of BCP bridge anions in the literature were scarce, and in fact they were limited to only these two proposed benzylic examples, which originate from Halabauer type reaction of this aromatic ketone and Birch type reduction of this acetate. Nonetheless, the carbon hybridization on the BCP bridge is approximately sp2.5, and so the BCP core should provide at least some degree of anion stabilization, at least as compared to a normal unstrained secondary carbon center. We therefore questioned whether metal halogen exchange from a bridge monobromide, now that this motif was relatively accessible, would be viable. Importantly, we realised that if we could generate a reactive bridge organometallic species, then a whole range of previously unexplored chemistry could then become accessible. To test this idea, we took this bromodiester, reduced it to the diol, and then protected the hydroxyl groups as their methoxymethyl or benzyloxymethyl ethers. We selected these protecting groups in particular for their stability to the intended reaction conditions, and also the possibility that they might offer coordinative stabilisation to the proposed intermediate BCP organometallic. With these substrates in hand, we first attempted to form a BCP Grignard reagent by direct magnesium insertion into the bromide, and then by metal halogen exchange using turbo Grignard or a trialkyl magnesiate complex. However, in all cases, we recovered only unreacted starting material. We then attempted lithiation with methyl lithium and secbutyl lithium, the latter at both minus 78 and minus 40 degrees, and in both the presence and absence of tamida as an additive to deaggregate the espuli. However, we again saw no metallation under any conditions. Even tert-butyl lithium at minus 78 degrees was ineffective. However, running this reaction at minus 40 degrees was found to give clean metallation, and we were able to isolate the addict shown in 70% yield following benzaldehyde quench.
We then scaled up the reaction over 30 fold and obtained a commensurate yield on this multimillimole scale also. We then surveyed other electrophiles in the reaction. Starting with carbonyl electrophiles, quenching the lithiated BCP with DMF, a chloroformate, and a vinerobamide gave the corresponding BCP aldehyde, ester, and ketone. By addition of lanthanum chloride solution, we were also able to quench with carbonyl compounds bearing acidic alpha protons. Transmetallation of organolithium reagents to rare earth metal salts typically increases their nucleophilicity and decreases their basicity, which improves the yields of carbonyl addition products with enolyzable substrates. It's more common to see cerium chloride used for this transformation, but the commercial cerium chloride heptahydrate needs to be dried very carefully to avoid undesirable hydrolysis to the oxychloride. In contrast, lanthanum chloride is commercially available in CHF solution as its dilithium chloride complex, which presents a more convenient alternative to the anticipated industrial end users of this methodology. By transmetallation to copper, we also achieved alkylation of the BCP lithium through both conjugate addition and SN2 type pathways. To highlight the high reactivity of the BCP lithium, we found that if you attempt to quench with methyl iodide in the absence of copper, you see none of the expected methylation product, but instead a second lithium halogen exchange to give the BCP iodide and presumably methyl lithium. By transmetallation to zinc, we also demonstrated Nagishi type coupling of the BCP with both aryl chlorides and aryl bromides under palladium catalysis at room temperature. To our knowledge, this is the first report of a two electron cross coupling at the BCP bridge positions, and also the first successful reported palladium mediated reaction at these positions, also. In terms of heteroatom electrophiles, we were able to readily access the BCP fluoride, phosphonate, silane, germane, boron pinacluster, and sulfide by treatment with the reagents shown. Synthesis of the BCP monofluoride is significant, since the only practical alternative is a procedure reported by Enamine in 2022, which is the addition of bromofluorocarbene to arene-linked bicyclo-110-butanes, followed by rainy nickel reduction of the bromide. After transmetallation to zinc again, then in the presence of a copper catalyst this time, we also achieved catalytic CN bond formation by a reaction with O-benzoyl hydroxylamines as a source of electrophilic nitrogen. This result is also worth highlighting, since the only existing divergent C end bond forming procedure at the BCP bridge positions is that reported by the Macmillan group that we saw earlier, and this is limited to the use of NH acidic nitrogen heterocycle nucleophiles only. Finally, by quenching the lithiated BCP with DABSO, which is a solid surrogate for SO2 gas, we are able to access the BCP lithium sulfonate. From there, we applied some of Mike Willis's chemistry to show, in a series of one-pot procedures, the synthesis of a BCP bridge sulfoxide, sulfinamide, sulfone, sulfonamide, and sulfonyl fluoride. So you can see that our chemistry now allows introduction of sulfur 2, sulfur 4, and sulfur 6 functionality at the bridge position of BCPs, all through the same general method, starting from the same bromide starting material. As we explored the scope of electrophiles that we could use in our reaction, we also tried quenching the lithiated BCP with an element type sulfinamine, which proceeded as expected to give two separable diastereomeric sulfinamides. The stereochemistry of the diastereomers was assigned based on the open or non-chelated transition state proposed in the literature for the addition of organolithium reagents to sulfinamines in ethereal solvents. We then of course wanted to cleave the auxiliary in each case to give the two enantiomeric primary amines. However, on treatment with HCl in dioxane, we saw simultaneous hydrolysis of a single mom group in each case. Since this gives two different bridgehead substituents on the BCP, as we discussed earlier, we see formation of a new stereogenic centre on the bridge position. An uncontrolled or unselective mom hydrolysis would therefore be expected to give each of the product amino alcohols as a one-to-one -one mixture of diastereomers. However, we found them both to be single diastereomers, and in fact enantiomers of each other. What this suggests is that the chiral amine, once it's liberated from the auxiliary, is able to direct the hydrolysis of one mom group specifically in preference to the other. This leads to the observed diastereoselectivity in the reaction, and so gives a new method for controlling the absolute stereochemistry on the BCP bridge. We can account for the selective hydrolysis based on steric arguments. If we consider the amine that's derived from the major RR diastereomer of the Elman product, which will be protonated under the reaction conditions, then we can appreciate that this might have two general conformations in solution. So conformations of type 1, where the aromatic ring is extended away from the BCP core, are favoured over conformations of type 2, where the two units are partially eclipsed.
DFT studies completed by my colleague Gemma, a scientific investigator here at GSK, show that the distance between the protonated amine and both of the oxygen atoms of the front mom group, as drawn, is less than 2.5 angstroms, which is well within the range expected for a hydrogen bond. Thus, the protonated amine selectively activates this front mom group, as drawn, towards hydrolysis over the real one, and vice versa for the corresponding enantiomeric amine derived from the minor almond diastereomer. This activation could be through a directed protonation, as shown in the left box, or by formation of a transient hemiaminal ether, as drawn in the right-hand box. In any case, the diastereo control essentially arises through a stereochemical relay from the chiral information in the Elman auxiliary. We expect that this method might stimulate interest in the development of other auxiliary-based asymmetric BCP desymmetrization methods. To our knowledge, there is only one other reported method to control the absolute stereochemistry on BCP bridge positions, and that's through a modification of Chin's procedure that we saw earlier. In this case, the stereochemistry of the BCP is propagated through from an enantio-rich boronate precursor, which is made through the Agaval group's asymmetric lithiation borelation chemistry, rather than a BCP desymmetrization. Returning to our own work, we also wanted to confirm that we could still control and manipulate the bridgehead substituents in our bridge functionalized products. To that end, we took this secondary alcohol and oxidized to the aryl ketone to simplify downstream chemistry. Treatment with HCl, with careful control over the reaction time, allowed controlled hydrolysis of the mom groups to isolate both the symmetrical dial and also the unsymmetrical racemic monomom protected analogue as well. The dial was returned to the diester under standard conditions, after which it was treated with the substoichiometric sodium hydroxide to give this unsymmetrical compound here, bearing one acid and one ester group. From here, there's a whole range of reactions that have been reported in the literature for further functionalization of this general motif. Finally, to explore further synthetic utility of our BCP products, we explored a range of derivatizations at the bridge positions. To start, the methyl ester was converted into the corresponding cyclopropanol under Kalinkovich conditions. Then, oxidation of the bepin ester with sodium perborate gave the corresponding alcohol, with which we were able to show the first example of a direct alkylation of a BCP bridge hydroxyl group by treatment with trimethyloxonium tetrafluoroborate. It's worth highlighting that alkylation of these alcohols is generally not trivial, since they undergo immediate ring opening to give the cyclobutanone upon deprotonation. The BCP aldehyde was converted to the enoate and the amine shown through Wittig and reductive amination reactions, respectively. We also accessed the BCP alkyne through bestman ohira homologation, and then confirmed its suitability as a click partner through copper catalyzed reaction with methyl azidoacetate to furnish the C-link triazole. Finally, Korochakovsky reaction of the aldehyde gave the corresponding epoxide, which we opened with methylamine and then cyclized with CDI to provide the BCP oxysolidinone. To summarise, in this work we have shown the first example of a two-electron or organometallic strategy for divergent functionalization of the bridge position of bicyclo-111 pentanes. We have also shown only the second example of a method capable of controlling the absolute stereochemistry on the BCP core, and the first to do so through a late-stage bridgehead desymmetrization. Overall, our chemistry allows modern practitioners to capitalise on the significant volume of literature surrounding classical organolithium reactions, and in doing so, enables a significant expansion in accessible chemical space for use in contemporary drug discovery projects. I'd like to finish by acknowledging the people that made this work possible. I'd like to thank my PhD supervisors, Dr. Darren Poole, Dr. Nick Meeson, and Professor John Murphy, my colleague and co-author on this work, Gemma Cook, I'd like to acknowledge our PhD programme directors, Professor Harry Kelly and Professor Billy Kerr. I'd like to thank my colleagues at GSK and Strathclyde for their analytical and administrative support. I'd like to acknowledge our funding sources, principally GSK and the EPSRC. I'd like to thank Matt for the opportunity to present my work today, and of course you for your kind attention. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you here, Joe. Thanks for the great talk about your research on BCP chemistry done on GSK and thanks to the audience for your kind attention. See you next time on Synthesis Workshop.